Thanks for coming back to the last lecture on the advanced topics and Higgs bundles. Uh, what I want to do today is I want to tell you about some correspondences between Higgs bundles uh, and other Higgs bundles or Higgs bundles with other objects in maths physics. Uh, before I get started, just a couple of uh, comments about the question sheets. So you'll see that the question sheets are all related to each of the lectures, but they're not in any order, particular order. So they're not from easy to hard. You should definitely not start by the first one just because it's first. Take a look at them uh, and start with the one that you feel most comfortable with. They are all problems um, that come from papers in the area. So they're all things that are not that trivial that will require some thought and that uh, ideally it will take you to read those papers that are mentioned and where these things are done to see uh, the methods a bit further. The methods are the ones that we described in the lectures, but they're a bit uh, further developed in those papers. So don't feel upset if you can't solve something in half an hour, it's not supposed to. Uh, but if you want to solve things that are a bit easier, so there's some lecture notes that from something I, I did in Singapore a few years back. So if you look at the archive, there'll be some lecture notes on Higgs bundles. And that wasn't advanced topics, that was a very bare introduction. And there the exercises are uh, much more simple uh, and to do just in a few calculations. Uh, what I thought here, since I was asked to do uh, advanced topics, uh, was that I should challenge you just a bit more. Um, but you should just, uh, don't, get struck, don't get stuck, don't get upset if you can't solve it. And uh, if you want to carry on thinking about these things later on, you can email me. Uh, so feel free, any of you, to email me. My email is in, uh, in the website. OK. so. Higgs bundles and correspondences. We'll be doing the things from chapter from the fourth chapter in the lecture notes. We'll see how far we go. And also, I'll have to go back to something that we skipped in lecture one, since parabolic Higgs bundles are related to what we want to do today. So we'll introduce parabolic Higgs bundles and see some correspondences with quivers. So let me just put here the plan. So we want to do Higgs bundles and correspondences. and correspondences. So this is, I left this for the last lecture since it's what I've been working on in the uh, latest times. So I've been working with different collaborators looking at correspondences, correspondences coming from a few perspectives. So I want to look at correspondences via three different directions, and there's probably many more. I just want to uh, start with these three. So the first one comes from dualities. So this could be Langlands duality or any other duality that you know between uh, groups or between moduli spaces that you could apply to Higgs bundles. Um, then I want to look at group homomorphisms, uh, group hom yeah. Morphisms. So, group homomorphisms or maps between groups that satisfy certain properties will induce maps on the moduli space of Higgs bundles for each of those groups. And it's interesting to ask what happens with the Hitchin vibration, what happens with brains inside this vibration, how do they transform with respect to these uh, homeomorphisms? And lately, I want to uh, take, borrow some uh, notation from graph theory. Uh, use quivers, which are graphs which carry some information on each of the vertices and arrows, and look at correspondences between these objects and Higgs bundles. So I'm going to be talking about work that I've done with David Baraglia. Uh, this uh, paper published this year on SOPQ. I'm going to be talking about work that I've done with Bradlow and with Bradlow Branco. Uh, so, this in terms of group of homeomorphisms, and I'm going to be talking about work with Steve Ryan involving quiver varieties and polygons and hyperpolygon spaces. So, I want to start by looking at some of these. Uh, let's talk about the dualities one first, since we've talked a little bit already and we're not going to dedicate that much time today. So for uh, Langlands duality, uh, 
Remember Langlands duality is a duality that we have between uh, groups. There are Langlands dual groups. So if I have a complex Lie group, oh, uh, we're going to be working just like before. I haven't fixed them here, but just remember we used to have here in blue the things that we have fixed: complex Lie group, Riemann surface of genus at least two. Uh, today we're going to just relax this condition, but for now let's just fix them here. So given a complex Lie group, I can form its dual Lie group, and the ones that you should keep in mind are uh, the following. So if I take the general linear group, GLNC, I'm going to come back to GLNC as the dual. If I take SLNC, I'm going to go to PGL and C. And if I go to um, SO2 and C, self dual, SO2 and C. And if I go to the symplectic one, SP2 and C, I'm going to go to the orthogonal with odd, SO2 and plus one C. So this is the correspondence that we're going to be considering. And we want to understand what's happening with the Hitching vibration and the moduli space of Higgs bundles for those groups. We mentioned just as a motivation uh, in the last lectures that there was some correspondence. And the correspondence is between the two moduli spaces of Higgs bundles for a group and its Langlands dual. What one can do is one can look at the Hitching vibration that we defined before. Remember, we're going to be taking a Higgs pair here. So we're going to take a representative of a class here. And what we're going to do is we're going to send it in particular, for instance, to the characteristic polynomial and its coefficients. So I'm going to send this to the coefficients of the characteristic polynomial of the Higgs field. So that phi minus lambda identity here. If I do the same, taking Higgs bundles for the Langlands dual group, I'm going to arrive to a moduli space AGCL that one can show, just because it's formed by characteristic polynomials, invariant polynomials, is isomorphic to our original base. This isomorphism is not always the identity. It is going to be the identity for, uh, for most groups, but for instance, for G2. So these correspondences also work for uh, exceptional groups. And when you look at G2, uh, the isomorphism is not trivial. Uh, if you want to know more about uh, that correspondence, you should look at Hitchin's paper from 2000. Uh, seven. So what is the conjecture that appears when considering moduli space of Higgs bundles and their Langlands dual? Well, Strominger, Yao, and Zaslow, Yao and Zaslow conjectured that the duality between these moduli spaces, the storic vibrations, should be a duality between the fibers. Duality of fibers. Which means we take the fiber over a regular point, uh, and we take the dual abelian variety in the other side, and that should be that, sh that should be what the fiber is in the dual side. So let's uh, duality of fibers, and here we should emphasize this is regular regular fibers. So. Uh, when we were looking at the Hitching vibration, we said in the Hitching base, there's going to be regular fibers and there's going to be some space that's not regular. So there's going to be some discriminant locus. And this duality is for all the fibers that are over the regular points. Remember, over the regular points, our fibers are abelian varieties. But over the singular points, there'll be uh, spaces that are not necessarily uh, nice or as nice, and for those spaces, this duality is still not well understood uh, for big uh, groups, for these Lie groups, and more generally. So back in 2002, uh, so 02, Housel and Thaddeus of proved that this is the case, so it proved that the duality between the fibers is indeed appearing for SL and PGL. Uh, SL and case. And soon after, Donaghy and Pantev and Kapustin and Witten around or six, uh, they uh, co completed the study of the regular fibers for these groups. 
If just as a, as a little exercise for your head, remember that, for instance, um, for, for GL, GL and C Higgs bundles, we mentioned that the regular fibers are Jacobian varieties. What's the dual space to that Jacobian variety? Any thoughts? Is the Jacobian itself. So for GL and C, the regular fibers are Jacobians of curves and the dual space to a Jacobian, so and the dual variety is again Jack. So we have a, du a duality between the fibers. The fibers are Jacobians and the duals are also Jacobians and it agrees with our little table here that says GLNC goes to GLNC under Langlands duality. When you look at SLN, SLNC, then the regular fiber uh, is the prime variety you said we constructed the prime variety here in the lecture. And actually for the dual space, the dual fiber <coughs> is uh, the prime variety of S sigma quotiented by torsion n points, which agrees with the fiber in the dual side. So you can carry on and look at the duality in general for groups, for any group uh, that has a Langlands dual group, or you can actually just do it for these classical groups. And for that, if you are curious about how to look at it, I would suggest the work of Hitchin 07, G2 uh, curves and, spec, uh, and Langlands duality, where he goes, uh, he does very explicitly the correspondence between spectral data for these groups. Uh, the work of these other people uh, is much more uh, broad reaching, but a bit more technical. The other thing that happened, uh, happens with Langlands duality uh, and mirror symmetry is that once we have mirror symmetry between the fibers, giving us the mirror symmetry of the two spaces, we had also brains inside the moduli space. So brains, brains here inside this moduli space and homological mirror symmetry also should, uh, should give us a duality between brains. So through Konsevich's work, there should be some dual brain related, which we talked already about when describing brains. So anytime that you study the moduli space of Higgs bundles, uh, you should keep in mind that there is this duality, there is this duality between fibers and there is a duality between subspaces. And you should ask, how does that uh, fit into your research or your picture? And in particular, we can even ask how, those, those, how do those dualities fix, um, fit with group homomorphisms or with graph theory. And that's what we're going to do. Uh, that's why I started with this one, because I want to also mention some open questions that appear when you look at these uh, two other correspondences together with the duality. Any questions about this? Yes? As dual, so when you construct a dual abelian variety, looking at the exact sequence and the annihilator, uh, that's what we're getting. Yeah. Uh, there's a bit more explanation, I think, in the notes about just more general. Uh, that's a great question also because uh, when you look at brains uh, inside the, the fiber, so you look at the brain inside the fiber and you want to construct the, the dual object in the dual fiber, you have to consider first the full fiber look at the dual space and look at the annihilator on the other side. Yes? Yes. Because if you think about it, uh, what you're doing is you're taking your spectral curve, you're pointing the base, given by the zeros of this polynomial, um, is your spectral curve, which is generically smooth, and it has the same linear system defining it. So you can calculate the genus, that's a nice exercise, calculate what's the genus of this n cover of the Riemann surface, and using that, you get the Jacobian dimension. Yeah. Any other questions? OK, so let's take a look at the other dualities and see what happens. Uh, so I want to keep this Langlands dual group here. Because the other correspondences 
the next correspondences, the group homomorphism correspondences, appear, or I started studying them at least, because I was wondering what else, I mentioned some of these before, what else can I put here? Which, uh, which moduli space can I put here over the same base of the Hitching vibration such that there is a correspondence which might not be the duality, uh, which shouldn't be the duality, so there's a correspondence between these two vibrations, these two moduli spaces, and then there's a new correspondence between brains. Uh, so in particular, from Langland's duality, we know that we saw yesterday that what we call BAA brains, like brains for real Higgs bundles, correspond to what we call hyperholomorphic brains, BBB brains. So I'm, I want to consider these new spaces, these blue spaces here, such that brains uh, don't, uh, don't satisfy the pairing that appears from Langland's duality. In particular, I like BAA brains to correspond to be a brain. So I want to keep the, the same type of brain if I can. And that appears from group homomorphisms very naturally. So let me tell you about it uh, a little bit, about what we've done with Steve Bradley. Um, and this is what uh, actually how the lectures start in the notes here. So I want to consider group homeomorphisms group homeomorphisms so these are maps between a group some g and some g prime uh, i can look at morphisms between real groups i can look at morphisms between complex groups let's look at complex ones first and then we'll go to to real ones once you have a group be a, a homomorphism between groups, you can define a homomorphism between the representation space. So this induces a map, so I'm going to call it just the same, between the representation space for your fixed Riemann surface and GC to representations of uh, pi one, again, for sigma, and GC prime, and just by the non abelian hodge correspondence we talked before about, we can then look at a map induced on Higgs bundles. So induced map on Higgs bundles map on Higgs bundles from, from this. Uh, file that we have here is going to be the following. So I'm going to take principal Higgs bundles. So P, let's recall that we're working with a complex group GC. And P phi is going to go to, so the same P GC, but tensor through the morphism of groups with GC prime. And the Higgs field will be a transformation of our original Higgs field that we're going to get through the action of our, oh, what's the name of this letter? Psi, psi. okay, thank you. Uh, we're going to get through the derivative of psi with phi. So what are these objects? This is what we're going to call the new PGC prime. And this is the derivative of, so this is through the derivative of phi, of psi under the identity, so at identity, giving a map from the adjoint bundle of uh, GC to adjoint of GC prime. So once we have that, we can ask what are Higgs bundles once we have particular group homeomorphisms. If you have your favorite group homeomorphism, we, could, we can check those ones. And it's actually not been done very much. So a few years ago, we started doing this kind of thing with isogenies. Uh, so we we'll consider isogenies. I'll put here a few so you know. But if you can think of other morphisms that you're interested in or that you've seen and give you some, uh, some 
nice property of groups, then it would be very good to try and do it. For the hitching vibration, it would suddenly be a new result. I'll talk today about isogenies. The other ones that I'm looking with uh, Sebastian Schlitz, so he's a student of Andy Naitsky. Actually, we're looking at triality. So how does triality uh, influence the hitching vibration? I won't talk about that today. I'm going to focus on these iso isogenies. Isogenies are maps between groups of low rank that give you some um, unexpected um, equalities or, or congruences, but that are not there for higher rank groups. So the ones that I'm going to talk today about are going to be rank two and rank three. Um, so instead of putting all of them, I want to just put the ones that we're going to use today. So for example, SL, so I want to do SL2C cross SL2C. This is isogenous to SO4C. And I want to do SL4C and SO6. So SL4C and SO6C. These are the two that we've considered, uh, both on the regular locus and on the singular locus. I'll tell you about the regular locus today. There's uh, many other isogenies. So if you look at page 36, you're going to see a long list of isogenies. For instance, um, uh, SO5C and SP4C. So another one that's here not mentioned, which is what would arise from Langland's duality, SO. 5C and SP4C. Uh, so that's from Langland's duality, the correspondence, but um, these other two are not from Langland's duality. And we want to understand what is the homomorphism for Higgs bundles, what does it do to the Hitching vibration, and what does it do to brains in the Hitching vibration. The way that we're going to study this map is by considering the action of Higgs bundles will be coming directly from this map. So if we apply it to Higgs bundles for each of those uh, two groups, then we get the following. So for our particular cases, uh, let's put the cases one and two here that we're going to be considering. So one and two for the cases one and two that are going to give us some of these blue correspondences. So case one and case two, we're going to apply the map, the isogeny map, to get from SL2 cross SL2 Higgs bundles and a natural SO4C Higgs bundle and the same for the second one. So we need to say what we're starting with. If we're starting with um, the isogeny, so the isogeny uh, is going to stand here. So we're going to call it I2, the isogeny in rank two, is going to send SL2C cross SL2C Higgs bundles into SO4C Higgs bundles, which means we're going to apply to a pair E1, phi1. And this is why I was telling you, you can actually define Higgs bundles not necessarily for just uh, groups of type ABCD. You can put uh, other groups, so like these product, and we're going to get an SL2 cross SL2C Higgs bundle. You can show that it's actually just two uh, SL2 pairs. Uh, so E2, phi2, and we're going to build the next uh, Higgs bundle, the SO4C Higgs bundle, by doing the product of the bundles and doing the product of the Higgs fields with the identities. So this is what we get. We get E1 cross E2. And then for the Higgs field, we get phi1 cross identity plus uh, identity cross phi2. And one can show that this pair actually belongs to the moduli space of SO4C Higgs bundles. So it's not too difficult to check that the properties uh, just carry through, that the product of two Higgs bundles, two vector bundles, uh, from the SL2 group are going to give you a vector bundle that has an orthogonal structure and whose structure is compatible with that Higgs field. Now the I3 isogeny that takes SL4C Higgs bundles into SO6 
fixed C heat candles, you might wonder how am I going to get a higher rank, but we're just actually going to apply the same correspondence that we wrote there for the Psi. We're going to start with a pair. Now, it doesn't have any number, it's just E phi in SL4C. And we're going to do is we're going to look at the Higgs pair uh, twisted with itself. So we're going to get the, we're going to use the bundle will be the, the exterior power of E. So this is a rank four vector bundle from SL4C. And when you take the wedge two, you're going to get a rank six bundle. And here the Higgs field will be very similar to that one, but just itself taken both times. So we're going to put just phi identity plus identity times phi. But what we're interesting most uh, on is not just these maps. These maps just carry on naturally from what we expla explained here. But we're interested in these correspondence with the Hitching vibration. So as I mentioned before, I want to not only see the map or the new moduli space over the same base. So here what we're showing is that we have SL2 cross SL2 Higgs bundles. When you look at the bases for these two groups and for these two groups, they're the same. So we can put one here and one here, and we have this correspondence between the bases, but we need to understand what the correspondence is between the fibers. So I, go, I want to mention in just a few minutes what the correspondence between the Hitching fibers are, since this fiber product construction could possibly have some other applications uh, in other areas. So what we're going to do to understand, to understand the correspondence between Hitching fibers So the Hitching fibers for SL2 cross SL2 Higgs bundles corresponding to SO4 and to SL4 corresponding to SO6, we need to consider fiber products of curves. So we need to consider fiber product of curves. So fiber products are products that we do over the Riemann surface. For instance, if we have for one curve, so uh, we're going to have the curves given by eigenvalues over each point of the Riemann surface. And the fiber, fiber product of the curve with itself, it's all of the combinations of those eigenvalues repeated. So we have a higher rank cover. Um, so the fiber product we're going to be looking at in the first case, so in the first case, we're going to be looking at the two cases that we have there. In the first one, we're going to have two spectral covers because we have two Higgs bundles, E1 e phi 1 and E2 phi 2. And these two Higgs bundles have spectral data. We saw already spectral data for SL Higgs bundles. So we know that spectral data here is a curve S and a line bundle in the pre variety, uh, so L1. And here there's an S2 and a line bundle 2 in the pre variety in the regular fibers. So for regular fibers. And we saw then the same for the spectral data of SL4. We know that there is a, a curve and a line bundle in the prime variety. So we want to do something to these curves and these line bundles in order to arrive to data for SO4C. One thing to note is the following. So let me put a remark here, because this will be something interesting. Remark. You might have seen it in the problems if you if you got to to something about uh, orthogonal Higgs bundles when considering SO SO two N C Higgs bundles your characteristic polynomial so Higgs bundles define a curve S a curve S through a characteristic polynomial which is the zero of our lambda to the 2n plus a1 lambda to the 2n minus 2 plus a2 lambda to the 2n minus 4, uh, blah, 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 plus our last coefficient, which is not really going to be an a n, but so 
this is going to be a sub n, where a sub n here, so a sub n, remember this is a section of k to the 2n, but it's not just any section, it's the square of a Fafian. So it's a Fafian square. So now your linear system has base points. The base points are the zeros of this differential because those zeros appear twice. So your curve is always singular. So whenever you look at Higgs bundles for SO2n, you are always on a singular curve. So this is always singular. What, sorry? What is the square? Of a Fafian. Oh, okay. Yes, of a Fafian, sorry. So always singular. And what you have to do to define spectral data is you have to separate those points and define the normalization. So you have some normalization S hat normalized. And then it's the prime variety of this S hat that you're going to be looking at. So what you're going to be doing for the spectral data in this curve is you're going to look at the map, that's a, so a little involution that sends lambda to minus lambda. In the original curve has fixed points, the fixed points are those base points, but when we normalize and we separate them, our new cover S hat doesn't have any ramification points and our new involution doesn't have any, uh, any fixed points and the data, the spectral data in this case is going to be coming from a prim of S hat and S hat quotiented by sigma. So this is a very, very quick explanation of something that took Hitchin many pages in his paper to describe. So you shouldn't worry if you can't deduce it right away. I just want to give you the gist of what's going on for orthogonal Higgs bundles, and in particular, the fact that spectral data has to be coming or comes from a normalization of a spectral curve. So if there's any way in which you could recover the normalization automatically, that would be great because you don't have to normalize the curve. And that's what happens when we do our method of fiber products. So through fiber products, we can show the following. So the Im image, so the image, let me put it here, the image of I2 has spectral data. I'm going to call it just trying to follow the notation from uh, the notes, so you can go back to them as four hat and L4 for uh, S4 being, S4 hat being the fiber product of S1, fiber over the Riemann surface with S2. And these two spectral covers are given over uh, the Riemann surface, so there's a pi one and there's a pi two from each of these two covers, and L4, the, rank, uh, the line bundle for the rank four orthogonal bundle, is just going to be the pullback uh, of, uh, of each of these line bundles on each of the curves. So let me write it like this. Um, L4 is going to be, if pi, pi one is the projection from the first one to, uh, to the first factor, so let's not call these ones. 